Today we're talking about this little fella right here. This is a review of the Konica Hexanon 40mm f1.8. Please enjoy. So people, welcome. This is a thousand words. My name is Radu. I'm a street photographer from Romania. And in this little corner of the internet, I make videos like this and I have beer like this. This is Zimand of the Kolsch variety. It's a locally brewed beer. Mm. Produced about 15 kilometers down that way. It's um, slightly hazy, slightly sweet and slightly bitter. It has a very complex and robust aroma, very malty, very hoppy, quite a fresh beer, not too alcoholic, it's just 5.1% alcohol per volume, so perfect for the first beer of the day, so cheers. Today we're talking about this little fella right here. Oh boy. Did I ever miss this? Ah, having beers? Talking about vintage glass. I don't even know precisely why I even stopped in the first place. I mean, I do, and I talked about it ad nauseum, one could say. But hey, uh, sometimes you need to go away in order to remember where you left from and where you're supposed to be. And um, you might also remember, I did another review of this lens in the past, I think it was around 2021, if memory serves. Quite a popular video on my channel. It was uh, pretty well received. And uh, I'm doing a revisit today, a re-review if you will for several reasons. First of all, because I can and I want to. But uh, that aside, this lens is very special to me for a few reasons. Firstly, because of the beautiful images it makes. Hold that thought. Secondly, because it has most of the qualities I look for in a lens and uh, practically none of the flaws. And thirdly, um, for a reason that's not uh, necessarily photography related, and that is uh, because this lens traveled with uh, my wife and I in our honeymoon, and uh, it, it it's practically was parked on the, my camera. It was basically a body cap because uh, while I did also pack a 28 millimeter that saw absolutely zero use and I used this lens for the entire trip. So it took quite a few great images. I mean, images that I love. I'm not uh, claiming they're anything uh, spectacular, but I do love, I do love the images this lens makes. I do love the fact that it's small, tiny, compact and light. And I do love that uh, it's got a, a special place in my heart because uh, I will always remember this as the lens I took with me in my honeymoon. So, that out of the way, let's uh, talk a bit about this lens. Announced in 1978, currently discontinued, the Hexanon 40mm f1.8 features a Konica AR mount which was introduced in 1965. It's got a focal length, obviously enough, of 40 millimeters, f1.8 as far as the maximum speed, a 35 millimeter full frame lens with a diagonal field of view of roughly 57 degrees on a full frame sensor. It's got an optical construction featuring six elements in five groups, an aperture system with six rounded aperture blades, and a plastic aperture ring traveling in full stop detents from f1.8 to f22. It focuses down to 45 centimeters. That's pretty 
reasonable, also pretty standard for a lens of this uh, focal length. A focus ring that travels about 75 degrees from minimum focus distance to infinity. It weighs in at roughly two or three potatoes. That's about 140 grams. Its filter thread is 55 millimeters of the screw type variety. And this lens is really compact. Now, it might not seem like much of a compact lens, but if we take away the metal vented sun hood I use, if we also take away the Sony adapter, you will start to see this lens is practically diminutive in size. It's really compact, even focused to its minimum focus distance, it's still quite a short, tiny, stubby little lens. And I love that about it. It's light, small and compact. Excellent as an everyday carry. As far as the mechanical construction goes, this lens is pretty well built. It's rather modern, being produced starting with the very late 70s and into the 80s, uh, well into the 80s. This lens is a bit more modern as far as the choice for uh, materials because it features, and I'll have to give you that, it features slightly more plastic than I'd have liked. The aperture ring is kind of flimsy if we're honest and plastic made. It does click at every full stop, but it, it, it's kind of flimsy and finicky. It feels a bit imprecise and you really have to pay attention to your f-stops because well, it, it, it will never bump out of place. You can easily skip a step or two if you're not really careful. It is, it's also plastic, like I said, and uh, if dropped, it can easily crack. I've owned another copy of this lens and uh, it, it had a chipped aperture ring, so be careful with that. There's rubber around the focusing ring and plastic all the way across the beauty ring Apart for the core, I guess, uh, they started introducing more plastic in the 80s in lenses and this was uh, always considered and deemed as a kit lens, so it was nothing uh, really that special, not as far as construction goes, because uh, we'll talk about images lately and that's where it really shines, excuse the pun. Uh, the Plastic in its construction also serves to cut down on some weight. Now, as far as handling goes and operation, this lens is really great. It was uh, professionally serviced a couple of years ago. Clean, lubricated, adjusted, really well done as far as CLA jobs go. This lens works like a dream. The focusing ring turns really smoothly and sufficiently dampened, allowing for precise and confident focusing, also allowing me to use it like I love to use lenses with a single finger, basically like you'd have an imaginary finger tab, like a rangefinder lens. You just uh, have it on your camera and do like this with your finger. It's really easy to use like this, really precise, really confident, I did mention the aperture ring is a bit flimsy, but hey, I, I do have this habit of practically parking it at wide open and leaving it at that, so uh, I don't always, so I don't uh, use the aperture ring a lot. Speaking of which, the aperture ring has this, uh, for me it's rather annoying, but after you pass f22, this lens locks into place at the AE position, let me focus, yeah. So it's locked. There's no way you can turn the, the aperture ring now. You have to press this silver button while turning the aperture ring in order to go back to choosing your preferred f-stop. It's a bit annoying and um, yeah, kind of makes for a finicky and capricious behavior. But that's the single thing I would um, 
I would dare criticize as far as handling this lens because otherwise it works like a dream. It's really beautiful in use, really ergonomic, fantastic as far as operation. It's a pleasure, it's a joy to use. The compact size of it makes it balance really well on my Sony. It's practically, it seems like it was made for here. Let me, let me just uh, go ahead and show you. It, it basically looks like uh, it's been made for this. Perfect size, focus, perfect size, perfect dimensions, really great as far as handling. It, it, it just use it like this. This is how I hold my camera and use it like this. It, it, it works works like a charm. It's really great at that. Fantastic. I can't praise it enough. Let me plug this back in because I'm charging my camera. And uh, that's about it as far as handling, ergonomics, build quality, as I said, a bit more plastic than I'd have liked. But other than that, the lens barrel itself is made out of metal. It feels it feels good, it feels solid, it feels well built, there's no looseness to it, there's nothing shaking. If you shake it, it's a well designed, well engineered piece of glass and they really don't make them like they used to. Which brings us to image quality. Now this lens performs. Uh, as far as desert island lenses go, if I were to only ever use a single lens, this would be it. Out of all the lenses I use, this is my favorite. For all the reasons I mentioned above, or rather prior to this, but mainly and certainly mostly because of the images it makes. It's also a really versatile focal length. I do love 40 millimeter a lot. I, I think I can say it's my favorite focal length. It's sufficiently wide to allow you to tell quite a bit of a story, including quite a bit of background in your shots. It's also sufficiently wide for a lot of indoor work. It's also sufficiently long, although that's a bit of a stretch, <laughs> excuse the pun, but uh, it's not really long, but 40 millimeter is still enough allowing for Subject separation, couple that with the pretty fast f1.8 opening. Great subject separation, really also great for portraits, for anything human oriented. Fantastic for cityscapes, excellent everyday carry. Fantastic as a street photography lens. I really can't praise this enough. As far as versatility goes, this lens basically does it all. Now, image quality is a strong suit of this lens. Back in 1979, shortly after it was announced, uh, Modern Photography magazine spoke of this lens and saw it in quite high regard. It said something akin to the fact that it was one of the sharpest lenses ever made by anyone for any camera regarding of cost. Now, I would not think any less of you if you thought that was proper bullshit and really not much else than uh, an exaggeration but uh, hear me out this lens um, this lens really lives up to that uh, bold claim because a bold claim it is now wide open it's slightly soft and slightly hazy but still sufficiently sharp for portraits for humanist photography for anything uh, except uh, things like, let's say, architecture or document scanning, but you wouldn't use this for that. So use this lens according to its strength and let it work for you and you work with it, not against it. So yeah, but as soon as you stop it down and even starting from F2.8 and certainly so after f4 this lens is crazy sharp well i shoot wide open 98 percent of the time sometimes i don't need more depth of field so i stop it down and it's there when i see 
how crazy sharp it can get. However, sharpness is not the end all be all of uh, lens qualities, certainly not according to Bresson, uh, who claimed sharpness is a bourgeois concept. And while I do love me sharp lenses, it's not everything. Um, this lens really shines, excuse the pun again, but it does shine as far as uh, being used for monochrome work, the way it renders the micro contrast, the intertonal variety, it's really something to look at. <laughs> Excuse the pun again, uh, I think I'm on a roll today. But um, yeah, it, the transitions from uh, the darkest darks into the shadows, into the mid-tones, all the way into the highlights, is really, really, on the one hand, is soft, elegant, and gentle. On the other hand, is really defined and precise. It's, it's got a way of rendering a lot of tonal variety. Ah, all this talking is keeping me thirsty. But uh, yeah, excellent for monochrome, really great at black and white, and that's basically my thing, so I would know, I guess, because I've shot a lot of black and white with it. Contrasty, punchy, making images that look shiny and silvery, almost with a metallic quality to the tones. It's really great for black and white. Now, this lens can also perform as far as colors go. It makes beautiful, vibrant, rich, lively colors that seem to almost kind of dance. They're joyous, they're really playful and vivid, lively. And that's at least partially due to the Konica color dynamic coating. That's their name for the multi coating they used. It's really beautiful in the way it renders colors. Very, very punchy, not in your face. They're not over the top. They're not exaggerated in any kind. It veers towards a, a neutral, colder, rendering, but uh, it's, it's really, really close to neutral. Excellent color reproduction, gentle and almost subdued in a way. It has that classic vintage look. This lens screams vintage. This is really fantastic for color work as well as monochrome. Now, being an f1.8 lens, this can make quite a bit of blur. And the blur is somewhat characterful, sometimes a little, a little jittery. Not really nervous, but it speaks. It's not silent. If I can dare use adjectives like this uh, describing bokeh, but uh, the bokeh balls are really round. This is speaking wide open and round in the center and tend to get cat-eyed towards the edges, but it's beautiful. I love a bokeh like this really fantastic as far as allowing you to separate your subject from the background. Really great bokeh, mostly smooth, most of the time smooth and buttery, really beautiful at that. Now it's where we have to talk about some quirks and peculiarities because, well, some may be tempted to call these flaws and defects, and technically speaking, they are optical imperfections due to their construction, but I still stand by my words and call them at most quirks, at most peculiarities, because I enjoy things like this. It's part of the reason why I use vintage lenses in the first place, because they render in a special kind of way. They render with personality. They render like they have something to say. There's a lot of depth to the way with vintage lenses render. There's a lot of that certain je ne sais quoi, but I do know quoi. <laughs> I specifically and precisely know quoi. It's exactly these imperfections. This lens can flare readily and easily and quickly. You just have to basically look at it 
the wrong way and it will flare. And it will flare like crazy. However, fortunately, these flares can be quite dramatic, really full of personality, distinguished in a way and really recognizable because let me tell you, it's not once or twice that I've seen pictures online and I recognize them as being shot with this lens only by seeing the flares. And uh, the flares are really wild, they're really crazy, but uh, you can use them creatively. They can be used to enhance your images. And uh, it's not only a flaw in the way that it, sure, it will lessen the contrast. Sure, it will introduce some ghosting and some fogginess. It's also surprisingly well corrected as far as chromatic aberrations go. It, it just barely, slightly, hardly worth a mention. Also some uh, barrel distortion, but that's something very easily fixable in post. Also quite a generous vignette wide open, however stop down a few stops and image quality improves dramatically and this lens comes into its own. It's practically close to perfect. This has basically been all of it, a revisit of the lens. I wanted to share some opinions after having used this for on and off, but uh, yeah, I've been using it for two years. It's my go-to city scape street photography lens because as mentioned earlier it's wide enough it's long enough it's pretty enough it works great it makes wonderful images there's really not much else i would i would want in the lens give me a metal aperturing with more precise more solid more confident clicks and Basically, the spell's perfect. I have been Radu, this has been Zimand, and I think I'm going to have another one before I start walking and start taking pictures. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I think I'm going to leave you with uh, some more pictures because, uh, yeah, I took a lot of pictures with this lens. And uh, please enjoy the slideshow. Until next time, be well, God bless you all.